Good morning. Today's Go Math lesson is 6.6. .6. Today we will be adding and subtracting fractions. Our essential question, how can you use a common denominator to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators? Let's connect. You can use what you've learned about common denominators to add or subtract fractions with unlike denominators. Let's unlock the problem. Malia bought shell beads and glass beads to weave into a design in her baskets. She bought one fourth pound of shell beads, three eighths pound of glass beads. How many pounds of beads did she buy? So first, let's underline the question that you need to answer. We're going to underline how many pounds of beads did she buy? That's the question. Next, it asks, draw a circle around the information that you will use. Well, I'm going to need the one-fourth pound of shell beads and the three-eighth pound of glass beads. So I'm going to add the one-fourth and the three-eighths, so this one-fourth and this three-eighth. Write your answer in the simplest form. So first we're going to have to find the common denominator by multiplying the denominators. Four times eight, which is thirty-two. You don't necessarily have to do that, but in this example they do. Personally, I would have looked at the 4 and the 8 and I probably would have made my denominators be 8 on the bottom because then I would have only had to change the 1 fourth and the 3 eighths would have been the same. In order to change 1 fourth I would multiply it by 2 over 2. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 4 is 8. So I would have done 2 eighths and 3 eighths would have been my equivalent fractions to do the addition for. But we're going to go with the example that the book gave us. So we're going to make our common denominator 32, which works as well. Use the common denominator to write the equivalent fractions with like denominators. Then add and write your answer in the simplest form. So 1 times 8, and whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So 1 times 8 is going to be 8, and 4 times 8 is going to be 32. And over here, we have 3 times 4 and 8 times 4. Whatever you do at the top, you have to do the bottom. The reason I picked 4 on the bottom is because 8 times 4 is 32, and we had already decided that 32 is going to be our denominator. Again, whatever I do at the bottom, I have to do the top. 3 times 4 is 12. So I have 8 32s and 12 32s. 8 plus 12 is 20 32s. And now if I'm going to reduce that to its uh, simplest form. The number 4 goes into 20 5 times. Number 4 goes into 32 8 times. So there's our, my simplest form. So you can see this another way is kind of what I've done here where you're looking for the least common denominator and the least common denominator in 1 fourth and 3 eighths is 8. In order to make this bottom be 8 4 times 2 would get me that, so whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top. 1 times 2 is 2, 4 times 2 is 8. I already have 3 eighths here, so I'm just going to bring it over. So then I have 2 plus 3, which is 5 eighths. As you see, when you do the least common denominator, you don't have to go through reducing. It makes it a little easier. So Malia brought 5 eighths pound of beads. Let's evaluate reasonableness. Explain how you know whether your answer is reasonable. Well, I can estimate the sum. Zero plus a half is a half, right? And since five eighths is close to the estimate of a half, then the answer must be reasonable. Another example. When subtracting two fractions with unlike denominators, follow the same steps you'd follow when adding two, two fractions. However, instead of adding the fractions, you just subtract. So, for example, 9 tenths minus 2 fifths. Write your answer in simplest form. So, 9 tenths and 2 fifths. Well, I can't, tenths and fifths are completely different things. So, I need to try and find a common denominator. I know 5 can go into 10, so if I make 10 be my common denominator, then I should be able to subtract easily. In order to make this 5 be 10 on the bottom, I am going to have to multiply... I'm going to have to multiply it by 2, and whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. 
So I have 2 times 2, which is 4, and I have 5 times 2, which is 10. So now I have 9 tenths minus 4 tenths. 9 from 4 is 5, and that gives me 5 tenths. And if I'm going to reduce that, I know 5 tenths is the same thing as 1 half. So now it asks to describe the steps that I took to solve the problem. Well, first I found a common denominator, which was 10, and I used it to write an equivalent fraction with like denominators, and then I subtracted the fractions and simplified. All right, share and show. Find the sum or difference and write your answer in simplest form. Be careful of the signs. Make sure you're adding or you're subtracting. This could be tricky. So first I have 5 twelfths plus one third. I have to find a common denominator. I know 3 can go into 12, so I'm going to make 12 be my common denominator. So I'm going to have 5 twelfths. In order to make this 1 third be 12, I need to multiply the bottom by what makes 12. Well, 4 times 3 is 12. So if I multiply the bottom by 4, I'm going to get 12. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top. So 4 times 1 is 4. So now I have 5 twelfths plus four twelves, which five plus four is nine. So I have nine twelves. The answer is nine twelves. I'm just gonna, all right, let's just do a couple more. So let's look at this one right here. All right, we have one, I'm on this one. We have one six plus three fourths. Six and four, the least common number that they both go into is 12. So if I want 12 to be on the bottom of both of these, I'm going to have to, on 1 sixth, I'm going to have to multiply it by 2 over 2 because 6 times 2 is 12. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the top. So 2 times 1 is 2. So I'm going to have 2 twelfths. That's my equivalent fraction. For 3 fourths, I'm going to have to multiply the 4 by 3 to make it be 12. Whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So I get 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 4 is 12. So now I have 2 plus 9, which is 11 twelfths. All right, let's just do one more. I'm going to do this bottom one. So this one is subtraction. I'm looking at the bottom. I have 4 and 8. So the number they both have in common is 8. I don't actually have to do anything with my 1 8, but I do need to change my 3 fourths to make it be 8. In order for the bottom to be 8, I have to multiply the 4 by 2. So I'm going to have 3 fourths by 2 over 2. 2 times 3 is 6, and 4 times 2 is 8. So I have 6 eighths minus 1 eight. 6 minus 1 is 5 eighths. Do the rest on your own. If you need help, I am on the carpet or in the front or in the back of the room. You can also work with a partner. Good luck.